Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We're glad to see you in the house of the Lord today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and let's ask God to touch us today. Are there any additional prayer needs besides the ones we pray for in Sunday school? Brother Josh. A couple of Yes. God knows those needs. Amen. Let's join our hearts in prayer today. Father, we just love you. God, we just thank you, God, for this time we have together today. We ask, God, you would anoint us. We pray, God, you would help us. We pray, God, you would strengthen us. And, Lord, I ask, God, that you would move, Lord. And God, order our steps today, Lord. I pray, God, that you would just, Lord, give us strength, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God. We give you glory in the name of Jesus, Father. We lift you up, God. And we're trusting you in Jesus' name, Lord. We give you the praise. Amen. Just a few announcements this week. Don't forget tomorrow evening um, will be our Bible class. Brother Matt Gunner is actually going to come on the 25th, so I will be teaching tomorrow night. We want to encourage you to be there for that. On Thursday evening, we'll have our midweek service. We'll be praying from 6.30 to 7 and have our service at 7. And we'll have a brief business meeting after the service. Then this Saturday, we'll be handing out flyers in the community, encouraging folks, witnessing to them, and encourage them to come. Uh, next Sunday, um, Resurrection Sunday, we're going to be having, of course, Sunday school at 10 and service at 11 and 6. And Sister Joyce Miles will be with us, Dr. Joyce Miles. from um, She was my professor at East Coast Bible College. And um, she'll be sharing with us. Um, she'll be sharing about the Ukraine, Israel, and be um, preaching um, both services on that Sunday and being with us in our Bible class on that Monday evening. So just wanted to make you aware of that. Back there on the table, there are two things I would like for you to take home and use. One is a prayer map of the United States of America. It's got a like a 30-day thing to where you can pray for the country. And then also there's one for the world as well. And so I'd um, like to encourage you to take advantage of that and, um, and everything. So those are the announcements. Let's worship the Lord this morning. Amen. I said let's worship the yeah. Lord Amen. this morning. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Amen. The Lord. Amen. The Lord. Sister Janie let's do it. is going to come and lead us. And then Sister Jenna and Brother Danny's going to lead us in song this morning. Amen. We are trioing it today, right? Yes. Tag teaming it. We call it tag teaming. We're going to tag team. All right. Praise the Lord. Uh, bro, uh, Brother Colton's sister, um, Clara Williams, just posted on our uh, page to um, prayers for her. So can we? Can I go back to the Lord in prayer for her? If you will, this is one of our Facebook watchers. Her name is uh, Clara Williams. Uh, let's just go back to the Lord in prayer. God knows what it is, and let's pray for her. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God, we come to you, Lord, on behalf, God, of Clara. God, this morning, Lord, we pray, God, that you would touch her, God. Lord, whatever this uh, prayer need is, God, whether it be healing, uh, financial, Lord, whatever it is, God, we pray that you would touch, and God, that you would intervene, God, in her request today. And God, we thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, if you will, stand to your feet. Help us sing this morning. I'm going to be singing. You're going to be helping me sing when we all get to heaven. What a day that'll be. Amen. Amen. That's a beautiful picture there, Brother Cole. Tell you what, you and Jenna, y'all just got it going on. Finding these beautiful pictures to go with the songs. Go ahead.
blessing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. Oh 
Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. Lord, we love you today. God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. You can be your stand. Testify to him. You shall stay there. Still a breath. His breath. I'd like to thank God for this opportunity. Uh, a little emotional today because uh, when I got sick, I didn't know that uh, when I got sick, I didn't know if I would be able to sing again. And, yes. and this is one of my greatest passions, singing and speaking and just sharing the love of Jesus Christ with everybody I ever come in contact with. Yes. And, uh, you know, I, I practiced singing for a couple of weeks and everything's been going pretty well. And this morning I wake up and my uh, voice is hoarse and all kinds of things are, are going, but that's allergy season and that's how it is. But I'm here to praise the Lord. I'm mm -hmm. here to give honor and praise to the one who yes. saved me, yes. who yes. made me whole, who gave me the opportunity to be here this morning. Yes, praise the Lord. I'm thankful for that. Yes. We're going to have Amen. a good service today. Amen. Um, Amen. Thank you. So I'm going to sing one that's pretty comfortable for me. It's called Sanctuary. And I hope you get a blessing out of it. Yes, Lord. Thank you.
you and Josh to come up and help me do the offering this morning. That would be great. <coughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. We don't have to run it, honey. <laughs> not, we're not in a major hurry. <laughs> All right. Let's ask the blessing over the offer. Brother Josh, you want to do that for me? Oh, yeah. Lord God, we thank you for this privilege that you give us to be in this yes, house Lord. today, God. Thank we're so you, thankful, Father. God, for all the blessings thank you bestow you, upon us, God, thank for the healings Father, that we God. see here in this house, God, and in your children, Lord. We pray today that you would be with each and every person as they give today, God. Multiply for us, God, that we may use it for the upbuilding of your kingdom, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. this morning. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 through 9. Isaiah 42, verses 1 through 9. Tonight, at the conclusion of our service, we will be having communion, um, reflecting on Palm Sunday. We'll be doing that this evening as part of our 6 o'clock service. I encourage you to be here tonight, the Lord willing, I'm going to preach a message entitled, The Dangers of a Relapsing Christian. Mm. Isaiah 42, verses 1 through 9. Word of the Lord says the following, Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged, till we have set judgment in the earth, and the isle shall wait for his law. Thus saith the God the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath to, unto the people upon it and spirit to them that walk therein. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles to open the blinded eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison and the sick 
and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory will I not give to another, neither praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass. And new things do I declare before they spring forth, I will tell you of them. This morning I want to preach on this thought. Jesus, the servant king. Jesus, the servant king. Brother Jimmy, would you pray for me from where you're at this morning over this message? seated. I'd like to welcome those watching by Facebook and as you know we just received our offering. If you'd like to support the church and feel led to do so, you can mail it to the church at 3605 Summit Avenue Greensboro, North Carolina 27405 or bring it by the parsonage. This is Palm Sunday. This is traditionally the week before Resurrection Sunday in our calendar tradition. And, and on Palm Sunday, we know the story. Jesus rides in on a donkey and people are waving palm branches and they're saying, Hosanna in the highest. And they're worshiping, worshiping Jesus. And what we see there are two things. Number one, we see that they're um, worshiping him as king. But just a few days later, the same group saying Hosanna is saying crucify him. So in reality, Jesus was not riding in as king. He was riding in as servant. The second thing we see is a foreshadow of what it's going to be like in heaven after the rapture of the church. Where we see Jesus as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And we also see a foreshadow of His second coming on earth. But He's not coming back on the colt. He's coming back on the white horse. He's not coming back with a crown of thorns. He's coming back with a crown of gold. He's not coming back as, 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 as a servant. He's coming back as a judge. And I want to tell you something this morning. And I want to tell you those watching by Facebook. Don't wait till it's too late to receive Jesus as Savior. Right. This week we celebrate what He did for us. Uh -huh. but, when we, but let me tell you. He's, when He comes back to the rapture of the church. And if you're saved during the tribulation. It's going to be rougher then than it is now. But you see, I've heard many times in the church sermons about Jesus. Paul Sunday. Many attributes. But I never heard one where Jesus was servant. When you look in our text in Isaiah 42, this begins a series of passages. What some biblical scholars call Servant songs. And one of those is even Isaiah 53, which we'll get to in this message this morning. In the servant songs of his book, the prophet Isaiah, God speaks through him and uses the phrase servant of the Lord for Jesus. Now, before we get to this chapter, the servant of the Lord was used a lot for other biblical characters such as Moses, such as David and Solomon and many others. But 
I want you to understand when, when Isaiah says servant of the Lord, he's not talking about them. He's talking about our Savior. And this is prophecy that was fulfilled, folks. This was written many years ago before Jesus came in the flesh. Uh -huh. But there are some things about Jesus being the servant that we need today as believers. And the first one is pretty obvious. The need for the servant. Verse 1 says, Behold my servant whom I uphold, my elect in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him, and he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. This passage is quoted actually in Matthew 12, verse 18. Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. Isaiah's servant songs shows the need for the servant. Now let me tell you, there are times where I love, I love to worship God as Savior. I love to worship Him as my sanctifier and my healer and my Holy Ghost baptizer and my soon coming King. But there's times in my life when I'm facing my darkest hour, when I'm facing my darkest trial, I need the servant. Amen. Yes. I need the friend that sticks closer than a brother. Right. I need the priest that isn't touched with the feeling of my infirmities. I need that. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Lord. The need for the servant to bring justice not just to the Jew but to the Gentile. He talks about my elect here. And that's not talking about the Jews there. That's talking about Jesus being the chosen one to die. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Yes. Whosoever will believe in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. But not only was He to come for the Jews, He's also come for the Gentiles. That's us. Uh -huh. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That puts us engrafted in the vine mm -hmm. this morning. Mm -hmm. Establish justice in the earth. Isaiah 42 verse 4, He shall not fail. Aren't you glad that God does not fail? Yes, praise the Lord. God the Father does not fail. God the Son does not fail. God the Holy Ghost does not fail. The Trinity, triune God does not fail this morning. Yes, Nor be discouraged. Till he has set judgment in the earth and the isles shall wait for his law. He would bring Jacob back to the Lord, the Jews, in Isaiah 49, 6. It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for the light of Gentiles that thou mayest be salvation at the ends of the earth. It says he would not hide his face from spitting in Isaiah 50, verse 6. I will... Get, I gave back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Do you realize that Jesus didn't have to do what he did? Amen. But he did. He could have hid his face from them. He could have ran from them. He could have backtracked on, 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 the, on, the, on those claims. But no, he went through it for us this morning. Amen. He would die for our sins. Isaiah 53, 5, But He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him. And with His stripes we are healed. I still believe this morning, not just in forgiveness of sin, but I also believe, friend, that, that, that He died so we could have peace. Amen. Yes. Yes, thank you. you know this world don't understand why we have peace this morning. They don't. They don't understand why when everything seems to be falling apart all around us, we can still have a smile on our face. We can still have a praise on our lips. 
we can still come to the house of God and worship Him in spirit and in truth. And I want you to understand this morning, not only for his, for our peace He died, for our healing He died. He is still a healer this morning. You don't believe He's the healer? All you got to do is look on the third row on this side and see a man who had a kidney transplant that made it through it so far and God has touched him. If you don't believe He's the healer this morning, look on the back row. Look at Brother Danny leading the singing again for the first time in months this morning because God is the healer. Hallelujah. If you don't believe He's the healer this morning, all you got to do is look at Sister Opal who's went through it all. Hallelujah. She only has one kidney. She has multiple stints but yet she can still come and praise God. You don't believe there's a healer this morning? Look also beside Sister Opal, Sister Jenny who's went through so much with falls and different things yet God has protected her. I've come to tell somebody this morning that God is still the healer. Hallelujah. He still heals. He still saves. And he still gives peace. Glory to God. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. He was a needed servant because he was God's elect servant. John 3, 16, 17 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world, condemned the world, but that the world through him might be saved. This means that all this was tied around something called the atonement of Jesus. As the servant needed servant, God paid the ransom for our sin through him. Matthew 20, 28 says, Even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Right. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is what? Death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He paid the price. So we wouldn't have to. As the servant, he substitute, God substituted his son for our sickness, sin, and healing. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he have made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God through in Him. As the servant, He was going to bring, ju bring justice gently the first time, but with wrath the second time to those who don't accept Him. Ephesians 5, 6 through 8, Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be ye not for, for, therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes, in, in, were sometimes darkness, but now you are like the Lord walk as children of the light. Hallelujah. As the servant, he demonstrated the way to God in humility. We need that. And we apply that today. James 4, 5 through 7. Do you think that, that the scripture saith in vain? The spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Mm -hmm. Do you want to know why some people can't get victory over the enemy? They don't walk in humility. That's right. Mm -hmm. All they want to talk about is what they've done. Mm -hmm. But I want to hear what God is doing. Amen. Yeah. 1 Peter 5, 6. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God. He may exalt you in due time. He's the needed servant this morning. But he's also the gentle servant. Verses 2 through 4 says, He shall not cry, nor lift, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed he, shall he not break, and the smoky flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment on the trip. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged till he set judgment in the earth and isles that waits for the law. The basic gentleness of the Messiah is emphasized by seven negative verbs that occur in verses 2 through 4. And allow contrast to the loud and austenious worldly conqueror who proclaims his deeds. And I mean, we see that throughout the world. These world leaders, they, some of them are so arrogant and prideful and things. 
But the servant came the first time and did not cry aloud. He did not voice in praise of himself. One translation of verse 2 says he will not shout or raise his voice in public. Jesus never spoke of himself. 14.10 Believest thou not that I am the Father and Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not myself, but the Father dwell in me. He doeth the works. When we use the term gentle servant, the emphasis here is that it's not that he will not speak, but that his teaching will be accomplished through quiet instruction rather than loud proclamation. This is demonstrated with Jesus' teachings on giving, prayer, and fasting in Matthew chapter 6 with the Sermon on the Mount. This is also demonstrated in other areas of his life. Praying in the garden. Healing the sick. And when he was raised from the dead. Now everybody else was in panic, but he was still gentle. As a gentle servant, he's viewed as one who takes mercy on the bruised and the broken. The term smoking flax here in this stretch of text refers to a burning wick and is used symbolically of those who are endangered. The idea of the passage is that the servant will take mercy on the weak. I want you to know there are times in my life and times in your life where we're weak in body and we can't do much. Right. But I'm here to tell you, friend, when it says here that he took mercy on the weak, that reminds me immediately of Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For, for and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I think of the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 12 where he says in, in verses 9 and 10 and he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecutions for distresses in Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Yeah. Uh -huh. Glory. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. When I'm weak, I'm strong through Jesus. Yes. 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 I want you to know something right now. I'm not as young as I used to be 10 years ago or 12 years ago when I first came here. I'm 47 now. There's some of you sitting here that are pushing, that are, that are nine years away from being 100. <laughs> Can you believe that? Sure. And we probably have the oldest living clerk in the church of God. Praise God. And he's still sharp as a whip and he ain't slowed down yet. He went to a, to a swap meet on Friday and Thursday. <laughs> I'm here to tell you folks, God's good. Amen. Ain't he good? Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. My son Noah, doctors wrote him off years ago. He's still here. He's sitting on the front row this morning out of his wheelchair. Yeah, Two spine surgeries later. I'm here to tell you God's still good. Yes, yes, yes. When we're weak, He is strong. Amen. Thank you, Lord. This isn't just the saving grace of God, but the sustaining grace of God. When we call... On that in our moment of weakness, He will show up and gently lead us. Verse 4 says this, He shall not fail nor be discouraged till He has set judgment in the earth and owls shall wait for His law. As the Gentile servant, He is our peace. This means we don't have to be discouraged or troubled. Amen. He starts John 14, which was known as the Passion Narratives from John 13 through when he got went through he through his prayer in the garden before he got betrayed. He starts that by saying, Let not your heart be troubled. 
You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. He says it again in verse 27 of John 14. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give, I, give, I, I give unto you. Not as the world give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. We see this as well in our verse. As a gentle servant under operating, uh, operating under God's plan, he will not fail. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. John 6, 37 through 40 says, All that the Father giveth me shall, I, shall come to me, and him that cometh unto me I will no wise cast out. I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which he has sent me, that all of which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Through this he demonstrated too that we must do the will of the Father. If Jesus had to do the will of the Father, we've got to do the will of the Father. Uh -huh. Amen. True. Matthew 7.21 says, Not everyone that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Revelation 3.5 He that ever cometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Through all of this, when I think of the gentle servant, I think of that old song that says, Gentle shepherd, come and lead us. For we need you to help us find our way. Gentle shepherd, come and feed us. For we need your strength from day to day. There is no one we can turn to who can help us face another day. Gentle shepherd, come and lead us. For we need you to help us find our way. Thirdly, there's something called the missionary servant. I'm going to look at verses 6 through 9 on this. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness. I will not hold, I, and, and will hold thy hand, and will keep thee, and will give thee for a covenant of the people, for the light of the Gentiles, to open blinded eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, and that, and that is my name. And I, my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the foreign things are come to pass, and new things God declare, for they spring forth, I'll tell you of them. In verse 6, we see the mission statement of Jesus as the ser servant. We see that he has been called of the Lord. Of, of the Father and to hold his and the Father would hold his hand and keep him and give him for a covenant of the people for the light of the Gentiles then in verse 7 to open blinded eyes to bring them out of, out the prisoners from the prison and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house a covenant to the Jews and a light to the Gentiles Luke one seventy nine says, "To give to give that light to sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet the very way of peace." The activity in verse seven to open blinded eyes and to set forth the prisoners is also talking talked about in Luke four eighteen when Jesus says, "The Spirit of the Lord is upon me." Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He, and he, he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and to recover the sight to them that are blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. This was done physically when he healed two blind men, when he healed blind Bartimaeus, when he healed the man born blind. When the blind man saw trees and then saw completely. 
This is also done spiritually too. 2 Corinthians 4, 4 says, In whom the God of this world that blind the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine unto them. Because of this mission statement in verse 7, that is the reason why you and I are saved today. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. I saw the light. No more in darkness, no more in night. Hallelujah, I saw the light. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Finally this morning, we see that he's going to be the authoritative servant. I am the Lord in verse 8. That is my name. My glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to the graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare, for they spring forth, I'll tell you of them. Can I tell you this morning, His glory was given to the Son. He said in John 1 verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 14, The Word became flesh, dwelt among us. We beheld His glory. No one else. John 14, 6, Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come unto the Father but by me. No one else. John 10, 30, I and my Father are one. No one else. No one else but Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We see the authority was given to him in Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spake him, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. We see again in Revelation 1, 18, I am he that liveth, and behold, was dead, and behold, alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mama. And check this out. As the authoritative servant, he gives us authority over some things. Oh, yes, he does. Matthew, Mark 16, 17, and 18. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Mm-hmm. Acts 1, 8. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea yes. and in Samaria Thank and you. in the other most parts of the earth. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. First John 4, 4. You have overcome him because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Right. Yeah. Authority. Authority. But you see, here's the problem, church. In this day and age, we got too many people seeking after the signs instead of the signs following the belief. Uh-huh. Well, they in revival this week down the road. Let's go hear, hear what's going on. Let's go over there now. Well, this one offers programs for the young people. Let's go over there. Well, this one's got mon- more money than the church we're at, so let's go over there. You see, people are falling after other things right. instead of letting the signs follow them. I'm here to tell you something. I'd rather have a church, small church, a 10 or 12 or 15 even, that are on fire for God, that's got the goods, than to be in your mega church any day. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying all mega churches are bad. Right. One of the most powerful churches I've ever seen has been Central Church of God in Charlotte. Mm-hmm. I'm here to tell you though, folks, it's not in the numbers. It's right. in the, the anointing. Right. Amen. Yes. Amen. True. Yes. We see then that he said new things shall spring forth. That reminds me of Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, she will not know it. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers and the deserts. 
I've heard this scripture misquoted so many times. God's going to give us a new revelation. God's going to give us a new word. Friend, what about the old word? Right. That's it. What about the foundations that are being destroyed? We got them all now. Even we even got the alternative lifestyle Bible. My Lord. You'll get that on the way home. Mm. It's sad. We're, there, we're living in this day. Mm, mm, mm. I want a new thing. No. Let's get some fog, fog machines in here and, and concert lights and let's Let's just have a concert. I'm here to tell you folks, some things have their place. But some things need to stay out of the house of God. I, I love praise and worship. I love the old school stuff. I love, I love African American gospel. I love all these different genres of music. But I'm here to tell you, if it's not anointed, we don't need to listen to it. Right. True. Amen. Mm -hmm. True. And we don't need to sing it mm -hmm. if it's not anointed. Amen. There's, Amen. there's some songs. I mean, I hate to say this one. The devil's in the phone booth down 911. I cannot find that in my Bible. Sure, he's fleeing from us. We got victory, but my goodness. Amen. Mm -hmm. True. Build my mansion next door to Jesus. <laughs> There's even a song about it, Cabin in Heaven. <laughs> right. Mama's teaching the angels how to sing. There's one. <laughs> These, these, these songs, some of these songs, you got to be careful what you're hearing. They're unbiblical. Mm -hmm. Very true. And the granddaddy of them all is sinner saved by grace. Oh, Lord, two shoes. Or two shoes. I'm not a sinner saved by grace. When I got saved, I stopped being a sinner. I became a saint of God. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Man, alive, I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. With this new thing that Isaiah was talking about was the new covenant. Jesus Christ, hallelujah. When you read Acts 3, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, Peter says he will send Jesus, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, what does this mean? Our salvation was met by Him being the needed servant. Our peace was met by Him being the gentle servant. Our authority was given by Him by being the authoritative servant. Our victory was met by him being the missionary servant. I'm thankful that Jesus is my Savior. Yes. Yes, that he Lord. saved me by his grace. Yes. That yes. he sanctified yes. me. Lord. That thank he you. filled me with thank the Holy you. Ghost. And many times has healed my body. Yes. 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 And I'm thankful that thank we're, that he's coming back. For us in the rapture of the church. Yes, praise the Lord. But I want you to know something this morning. I'm also thankful that He came to yes. be the servant. Mm -hmm. So we could have these things this morning. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And that's the reason why we need to say Hosanna to the highest. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's pray together. Father, we just love you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for your God, Lord, thank you, God, for our pastor. Thank you for the anointing of your spirit this morning. Lord, I just pray, God, in the name of Jesus.
And God, you would save those that are lost. Save our lost loved ones this morning, God. Thank you, Father God. I've got cousins that need the Lord today. Lord, I've got friends that need the Lord today. I haven't forgot, Lord, what you told me many years ago before I became pastor of this church. Lord, I see everything that's going on, Lord. And God, I just pray that you would move, God, in this world. That God, you would save those watching by social media this morning. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus. That God, you would, Lord, just give us peace today, God. The enemy is running rampant on some of our minds and some of our hearts. And I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that you would save to the uttermost. Father God, I pray for victory today, God, for your people. And I pray, God, that, Lord, you would just continue, Lord, to anoint us with your power. Let everything we do be pleasing in your sight, Father. Help us, God, to, to use wisdom, God, on, 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 what we, on what we listen to, God, and, and what we read, Lord. And God, I pray we would stay in your word, Father. And that, God, you would strengthen us in Jesus' name. I pray, God, for every church in this area. And Lord, I lift up our sister church, Gate City, to you today, God. Father, I pray for Pastor Brett and Jennifer Carter. I pray you would touch them today. I pray you would strengthen them, God, and bless them in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that Lord, you would just reach out and touch Bethel Baptist Church up here on Lee's Chapel. Bless them today. Touch Pastor Gunner, God. Anoint him today in the name of Jesus. I pray for Lake Brant Baptist today. I pray for Brother Randy Pierman, God. Dear friend, that you would touch him. I pray for our Reedsville churches that are so dear to us, God. I pray for brother the Bray Brothers, God, that you would touch them. I pray for Johnny Cox and Eden at Summit Road Church of God, that you would be with him, God, and touch him, Father. Lord, I pray, God, that you'd be with all the churches in this area, God. I pray for Brother Timmons, God, and the um, True Gospel, True Salvation Fellowship Church, God, that you would bless them today, God. And Lord, we just thank you, God, for everything, Lord. We bless you, God, in the name of Jesus. If you're here today, every head bowed, every eye closed, and you need prayer for something, this altar is open for you today. You can come and we can pray for you today. If you need a touch from the Lord today, Whatever you have need of, God is able. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you. We praise you, God. You want to share with Yeah. I'm going to stand in. Uh, my sister and my oldest nephew will be leaving Saturday to go on a mission trip to Texas. Uh, they're going into Mexico too. Normally they do. They, they go, go um, so there's, I think she told me yesterday there's 18 of them going from their church up in North Wilkesboro uh, to uh, do some mission work uh, in Texas. So I just want to stand in for them because we forgot to pray with them yesterday. So uh, if you will, just stretch your uh, hand forth this way. Uh, we're going to pray I'll for that pray mission for team. And Jennifer's body too. Yes, pray for Jennifer. She hasn't felt good this week. So just pray that God will continue to. Uh, touch her that she'll be healed well enough to go on this mission trip uh, and just touch the team uh, from the Mount Pleasant Baptist Church in North Wilkesboro. Heavenly Father, yes, Lord, 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 we just and all the others, God, going on this mission trip, God, that you would touch them. God, we pray you'd watch over them, Father God. Help them, Lord God, as they do the work. Uh, Father God, that they're going to be doing, God, just touch them, Lord, and continue, God, to touch Jennifer. Lord, we pray, God, she'll be 100%, God, by next Saturday, God, and Lord, that she would feel good and be able to do this trip with no problem, God. Lord, and we thank you for it, God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. God is so good. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Don't forget, tonight at 6 will be our evening worship service. We'll be having 
um, communion as a part of that, celebrating Palm Sunday and what God's done for us. And we're looking forward to a great week in the Lord. Amen. Let's stand and be dismissed this morning. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you. The Lord guide you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have some fellowship today. God bless you.